talking with the experts. In episode 563, discover Michael Tucker's strategies to generate six to seven figures through virtual events and grow your business. What products can you build or what products do you have that you can sell that are higher ticket? Because people will pay as long as you build it outright, as long as you build the events in a way that really, um, you know, adds value to them, but then opens their eyes to what's possible if they work with you. And so that's where, you know, Rose, a lot of people miss out on is because they run these virtual events and then they're selling at the very end a $37 ebook or a service that, you know, to be honest, people don't want, they, they want something more. They want something, something deeper. And so start thinking today, what is that service, that product? Do I have a product that, um, that is higher tier, that is higher end? Do I have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar program? Because people will buy it as long as, as you build the machine right. Talking with the experts. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. This is where we discuss great ideas to take your business to the next level. How do we know these ideas work? Well, it's because we're talking with business owners who are using these ideas. Business owners who have years of experience and expertise. All things business, by business owners, for business owners. And now, here is your host, Rose Davidson. Hello, welcome to Talking With The Experts. I'm your host, Rose Davidson, from talkingwiththeexperts.com. Talking With The Experts is all about business, by business owners, for business owners. You can find it on all podcasting, streaming platforms, and on YouTube. And today, it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to Michael Tucker, And Michael's going to talk to us about how we can generate six to seven figures with our first or our next virtual event. Now, Michael uh, is all about creating unprecedented income and influence that can take, um, you know, not so long to do uh, with his help. And uh, he has found a way to shorten the the never-ending time span to just days through his virtual event and digital marketing secrets. After generating over $30 million in profit in just um, a two to three year time span with his, for his clients, he is now ready to share that secret formula for running successful virtual events and marketing tips with an online entrepreneur who's ready to grow their influence and their income. Michael, welcome to the podcast. It's such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much, Rose, for having me on. I'm so excited to add value to your audience. I think this, I don't think, I know this episode is going to change some lives. Wonderful. Now, we a lot of us um, are a bit uh, hesitant to run virtual events because, um, you know, we either we don't know how to do them successfully or um, we don't know, you know, how much work goes into them because I know there is a lot of work behind um, organising and running a virtual event. So tell me your take on, you know, how someone who's, you know, in that hesitant stage can move forward and, you know, run a really successful event. Yeah, great question. I understand. You know, a lot of people come to me and they're like, Michael, are you really think I can do this? And the answer is yes, right? I truly believe that everybody has a mission and a message inside of them. Um, and the best way to get it out is through virtual events. And, you know, the cool thing is, Rose, that, you know, with virtual events, you can start out as basic or as complex as you want. And I think when people think of virtual events, they think of these big, you know, Tony Robbins type events, you know, these Dean Graziosi, like you talk about like these top notch, when in reality, a virtual event can be just you throwing up a Zoom, like, you know, we're doing now a Zoom where we can hop in together and just speak to 10, 15, 20 people, right? And so I would say start where you are would be some advice I'd give to people. You know, it's great to have goals and ambition, ambitions for these big events, but just know, just start where you're at because um, it is going to be a, a learning journey and it's going to uh, take a lot of practice to get really good at virtual events. And so um, the first thing I would, you know, say is if you're here and you're considering, you're like, Michael, maybe I'll maybe do it. I'll just say, uh, you know, start out small. Um, something like a, a 60 to 90 minute webinar is something perfect to start out with. You don't have to start out with doing, you know, a three day event, a five day event. Just start out where you're at and build confidence from there. 
Yeah, I, I totally agree. I run um, online business events um, and uh, my first one was a three-day event and my goodness, it really took toll on, on me personally. It was <laughs> very tiring and I had like about 10 speakers each day or something and for three days and um, it was like huge. And now I'm running another one in November and I've only, I'm only making it for one day, but, you know, silly me didn't uh, program any breaks in there. So I'm going like from nine in the morning <laughs> till 7.30 at night. And uh, thankfully someone's going to come in and give me a break during the day and co-host with me. So that's wonderful. But, you know, what happens when we get so excited um, and forget to, uh, you know, cross all our T's and, and dot all our I's and, and make sure that we've got everything in place and, and that we're looking after ourselves as well because running a virtual event can be quite uh, tiring. Yeah, it can be for sure. And I think that, um, you know, having a good solid team is, you know, something that's a must. Now, I'm not saying, you know, for your first event, you need to go out and hire this big, you know, astronomical expensive team. But, you know, as you grow, you definitely need to prepare for growth, right? Um, a lot of people, the reason why they aren't hitting the numbers that they want, or they aren't reaching the people they want is maybe because they haven't prepared themselves for growth. And so um, that's just a good lesson for everybody is just to be prepared and uh, take time. You know, I have a lot of friends, like actually one of my friends, uh, he's been doing this for years and he just decided a couple of days ago, hey, I'm going to do a, a virtual event tonight, like the night we're recording this. It's like, you know, we're going to do a virtual event. Like some people can throw it up, but you know, sometimes it takes preparation. It may take a few weeks. Um, so if it's just you and you're, you know, you're by yourself, that's okay. But just know, build a little bit more time to think about things and to prepare. Um, I don't want you to overthink it, right? I don't want you to go to where you're months and months of planning and never executing, right? Because that's no good. But take time to think about it and plan your growth because it's it's so valuable, like you said, that, you, that you're taking care of yourself, right? If you get burned out, then just is no good it's no good absolutely so um are virtual events better than in-person events great question you know i tell people they both work right i've i've seen virtual events that have made millions of dollars like literally we've had you know virtual events that have made five million dollars in a week right where we've had in-person events that have made five million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars you know so they both work but the reason why i love virtual events is because you can be in the comfort of your home. You can be in your basement, in your office, at your house, sitting on your couch, and you could be sharing your message and your mission with almost no overhead cost. You all like Zoom. There's, it's a, you can get a free account. I think the cheapest version of Zoom is like fifteen dollars a month. So pretty much no overhead cost. You could be speaking to people all around the world. Like you can't, you can't replace that. Now in-person events have their place, but I'll say virtual events um, are definitely trendy right now. You're gonna see a lot of people doing it because the barrier to entry is so low. And I think everybody, I truly believe everybody, if you're listening to this podcast or watching this show, I truly believe you should find a way to implement virtual events into your business. It doesn't matter if you're a real estate agent. It doesn't matter if you are a coach, a speaker, an author. I truly believe that because the barrier to entry is so low and because there's so many people online, you should be taking advantage of this. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I mean, if you have a, a virtual event, you can reach that global audience where it, uh, an in-person event is, you know, you're quite restricted to a local audience. So, um, and, you know, you, you may not find the, the client within that in-person event that you're looking for, where as a, a virtual event, you know, you have, maybe thousands of people that you're reaching and you'll find your ideal client amongst that. And that leads me to my next question is how can we craft a, a client getting event that attracts our, de our dream customer? Yeah, great question. You know, since now, you know, I, you know, now you know that uh, you should be running virtual events, but I'll say that start with asking where are my potential customers at currently and where do they want to go? Like, that's what I always tell the people I work with our clients. Um, you know, I'll say, okay, where are they at right now? Like if you're a fitness coach, you know, what, what shape are your, your clients that you put, you want to land? What shape are they in? Where are they locating? What are they talking about? What are their needs? So you need to take an assessment of where your potential customers are right now. And that's not physically. I mean, I mean, where are they at right now? Mentally, what are they, what are they wishing for? What are they wanting? 
but then also, you know, asking yourself, okay, where's their dream destination, right? Where do they want to go? So you know where they're at now, right? They maybe if you're a fitness coach, maybe they're overweight, maybe they're, uh, their health is in a bad place. They're having to go to the doctors a lot, but their dream destination is being able to fit on those old clothes and go play with their kids, right? Or maybe if you're, um, you know, helping, I'm just single parents, maybe it's that they can co-parent together. You know, that's the dream destination. And so what you need to ask is what, where, what are those two things? And then how can you and your product and your event bridge the gap, right? And so you use your event to educate them and help them get closer to that dream destination, right? And so I start there, you know, we tell all of our, all of our clients to sit down, look at that first, and then you can build an event around that gap around that. So for example, I'll give one example and, and sorry if I'm going long on these questions, but um, we have a client right now. She teaches businesses how to get funded, right? And nonprofits, how to get funded. And um, you know, a lot of nonprofits right now, they're struggling for cash. They're struggling for donations. And so she helps them learn how to get grants and other creative funding strategies so that they can fulfill their mission, right? So they can actually do the thing that they started their nonprofit for. And so the gap is the process to get that money, right? And so she runs a virtual event teaching people, hey, how, how to go from stressed out in your nonprofit, struggling in your nonprofit because you don't have enough funds to having an overflow. So yeah, you can step into, so that gap there that middle ground is what you need to get good at running virtual events on. And so that's where I would start. And it doesn't have to be that that complex, you all. I ask this question all the time is, what are the steps that I take to help my clients win or my customers win? Same for you all. What are the steps that you normally take whenever you work with somebody to help them win? And then you're going to run a virtual event on that. Meaning if you're a health coach, the steps they usually take to help people win is probably getting them an accountability partner getting them a nutrition plan. You're just going to run an event about those things to teach them the importance of those things and start getting them momentum. And then you can present your services and your products at the end of that event. After you start getting them some wins, you start getting their eyes open to what's possible. You present your ser services and product and then the rest is history. Yeah, no, really great points. And, you know, obviously to run a virtual event, you've got to have a target audience. Um, really, there, there's not much point running one unless you've got some type of customer in mind. So, you know, they're really, really great points, Michael. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I guess how can we use, um, you know, high-end services and products to, you know, increase our income? Yeah, great question. Um, you know, a lot of people think of virtual events and they think of selling $97 products, $50 products at the end. But a well good, like a well-built virtual event can actually, you know, really, really inject some fuel and some cash into your business. Um, you know, we we use a lot of virtual events to sell higher ticket programs. And the reason why I love virtual events to sell higher ticket programs is because the more immersion you have with a customer, the higher the chances of conversion. So meaning the more time that somebody spends with me, the higher the chance I have to close them into a higher profit or higher ticket program. And so one of my friends one day, he said, uh, Michael, he said, I've heard and, and he said, I've heard that. For about every hour that somebody spends with you on a virtual event, they'll they'll have about a thousand dollars worth of trust with you. Let me say that again. He said about for about every hour that somebody spends with you in your virtual event, they'll spend about a thousand dollars worth you. And I'm like, that's that's crazy. And so I started looking back at the past events that we did, and I'm like, huh, that's so true. Whenever I've ran an hour, hour and a half events, I've been able to sell a thousand dollar products pretty. I'm not going to say easily, but it wasn't wasn't super complicated. Whenever I've ran five day events and I've spent ten plus hours with people, I've been able to sell ten to twenty thousand dollar products, fairly simple, right? And it's all because you're building trust with people. So the question is, what products can you build, or what products do you have that you can sell that are higher ticket? Because people will pay as long as you build it out right, as long as you build the events in a way that really. Uh, you know, adds value to them, 
but then opens their eyes to what's possible if they work with you. And so that's where, you know, Rose, a lot of people miss out on is because they run these virtual events and then they're selling at the very end, a $37 ebook or a service that, you know, to be honest, people don't want, they, they want something more. They want something, something deeper. And so start thinking today, what is that service, that product? Do I have a product that, um, that is higher tier, that is higher end? Do I have a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollar program? Because people will buy it as long as, as you build the machine right. Yeah, and that that's um that's really important too is to get those steps right, get, you know, and get your head around all the things that you need to do and selling that high-end product, making sure that it's targeting the right audience and um you know, it's it's the price point is going to suit the people that you're targeting and and but sometimes we get that wrong because uh, you know, we don't value ourselves. We don't value the the, the product or service that we're offering. Um, and so we tend to undervalue. Uh, yeah, you know, that's a our, great point. A training, a training course or program or, or you know, uh, the pro product that we're selling. So it's, it's, it's important that we, we get our heads around all, all the technical things and, and the value that, um, that we deserve. No, that's, that's actually something I struggled with for a long time was realizing the value I had. And people always ask at the end of these podcasts, I'm on in shows and they say, Michael, what would be like the advice you would give to your younger self? And that's the advice I normally tell people on the podcasts and shows I'm on is I would tell my younger self to value myself and, and my services more. You know, whenever I first started our virtual event agency and we, before we started taking on clients, you know, the very beginning I was charging for a virtual event like dirt cheap. I'm talking like hundreds of dollars. Now for some, that may be, you know, a lot of money, but for the services we are providing and the results we are getting, like Rose, the first client I ever worked with, I think we made him $750,000 in 10 months. It's crazy. And I was only charging a couple hundred dollars, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it was, it came down to my self-worth. And so I always tell people, you know, if I was to go back and I'd be like, step into the confidence, step into belief in yourself, in your talents, in your skills. Um, because, I, you know, I've, I've heard this one time and this was like the wake up call for me. Um, Eric Thomas, I don't know if you know who Eric Thomas is, Rose, but motivational speaker, um, one of the biggest motivational speakers in the world, um, especially here in the US. And he said the difference between well, let me say, let me back up. He said the difference between him speaking inside of elementary schools, churches, local chamber of commerces, to speaking in front of Nike, Adidas, Amazon, Apple. He said one day, he said, you know what? I just realized I was under undervaluing myself and I didn't have confidence. He said, now he's like, it wasn't, is not going to be like this for everybody. He said, one day I just woke up and said, you know what? I'm worth more and I'm going to stop accepting those opportunities because I'm going to open myself and and, and start accepting the bigger opportunities and, and believe that I deserve that. And so for you all listening today, there may be a few people here believing that you're not worth it when in reality, take a step back, look at the people you've been able to help, look at what you've built and take some time to work on that in yourself because that's truly one of the keys to... um you know, being able to sell high tickets. So Rose, I just wanted to confirm what you said is totally true. Totally true. Yeah. For Thank sure. you for that. Yeah. I, 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 um, I think that your yeah, self-worth is really important and, and confidence in running a, a virtual event is really, really important. And, and, um, you know, you have to find that confidence to be able to put yourself out there, whether it's a webinar or a masterclass or whatever, or, a, you know, online business event like I'm running, if you don't have that confidence in yourself, the audience is going to know and they're not going to watch. It um, doesn't matter, you know, what kind of great guests you've got coming up. Um, I think, you know, you've, you, you've got to have that confidence within yourself. Yeah, 100%. And when, when we talk about and we coach entrepreneurs and how to run virtual events, you know, we, we always tell there's a few things you have, you, you really need to have and have to have to make a virtual event successful is number one, you have to have um, engagement, meaning that you have to be engaging with people. Um, and that's cool. But the second one is the right energy and which kind of goes in with the confidence, right? We tell people you have to show up with energy and, and act like you 
should be there. And you want to believe how many people, I mean, you, you tell me, Rose, you've been on virtual events before. Like you, have you ever been just to a virtual event before and you just didn't feel like somebody believed their message, like what they were talking about. They just didn't believe right. about being like, I don't know. It's just like, maybe you all listening know this, but like I've been in rooms to where you can just, the energy is off. You can just tell they're just doing it because they saw a podcast telling them that they should do a virtual event. And so they were just doing it because they thought they were supposed to, and they weren't actually into it. And they weren't confident in themselves and it just never turns out well. So we always, we say that same thing, you know, you have in a virtual event, you need engagement, you need the right energy and confidence. Um, and that's, that makes everything totally different. Absolutely. Absolutely. Michael, how can we automate our events? Um, so, you know, that we get those automated profits. I love that. There, there's many ways we can do that. We could talk about this for hours, right? Um, but one thing I'll say is so many people, they try running so many different virtual events. Like they run this this one, this today. Next week, they'll run another one. I'll say the first thing you need to do is get good at one virtual event, meaning get good at one talk, one presentation, one, one sales process. Because listen, y'all, the Facebook ads out there, the Instagram ads, the YouTube ads, they're, they're full of marketers. They're just trying to pull you into the product, their service. And they're going to tell you that this, this sales process is the best. This one is the best. And they're just going to try to pull you all different ways. I want you to get good at one thing. I want you to get good at one presentation, one, you know, one pitch. And then once you have that, the power of it is there's actually softwares out there where you can put your presentation and you can record your presentation and put it into software like tonight, actually, I had a client, she took her presentation, she put it into her, this software, and then she put it on her social media. She just had her link in her social media. She did run a little ads to it, but she made like two or $3,000 tonight without ever being there. And this presentation ran by itself at 7 p.m. tonight by itself. Listen, you all, there's softwares out there. We make things harder than it has to be sometimes. There's software. There's one, uh, I want you to look it up. It's called Webinar Jam. Webinar Jam, it's great for automated webinars. Um, there's another one called Webinar Fuel. Check it out, go go get a free trial. Um, I think they even have some pretty low and, and affordable plans there. But get good and then you could just stick those on your website. Even if you're, um, let's say, I'm using agents a lot because I work with some agents. But imagine you're a life insurance agent. You can record, uh, record one presentation, put in a software like Webinar Fuel, Put it on your website so when people land, they can click and watch a presentation about the power of the right life insurance policy and how it can save your family's future. And at the end of it, a call to action to book a call with you. And you can literally drive people to your website and to that webinar and get appointments on autopilot. It's crazy. I have one life insurance agent that's getting about 500 appointments per month on their calendar for their agency just through automated and virtual events, y'all. It's wow. crazy. That is crazy. Oh my goodness. I'm I'll have to um uh take note of that and, and think about um doing that for, for my online business events because um I think that would be really great and and uh it keep people coming to the website and learning about these events and and, and getting some benefit from them. Yeah, a hundred percent. So it's doable and um Again, there's people out there that'll help you set those up. If you're not tech savvy, YouTube will even teach you how to set that up. So um, just know if you're like one of those people. And the reason why I wanted to talk about that, Rose, is a lot of people say, Michael, Rose, I don't have time to do virtual events all the time. We got you. That's what this solves is like getting that time away where you can just get good at one presentation and then automate that and send it out into the world. Yeah, I like I like your your point about you know getting good at one presentation and and um, you know keep refining it and keep doing it and doing it until that you know in your mind it's perfect. Although there is no such thing as perfect because there's <laughs> always something that can go wrong. But yeah, you know just keep plugging away at that one specific topic um, until you know you've got it to where you want it to be, and it's going to convert eventually because you know it it. May not happen um, immediately, but, you know, give it some time, deal with a few tweaks and, you know, just keep at it and practice, you know, makes perfect as they say. Yep. Yep. I've heard many, many conversations. Um, you know, actually tonight I was, 
I was watching, I have several clients running events tonight. And actually I was watching one of my other clients. I was thinking, I was like, wow, he's so amazing. And I've realized I've heard the same stories about his grandmother and how he took care of his grandmother. I've heard that story now. I've been working with him for five years. And every time I start to get emotional when he's talking about taking care of his grandmother who passed away. And now every time he he makes off it or he makes cookies at his office, he thinks of his grandmother. Like he just, it's just, it, it, he tells the story so good. And so um, a lot of people say, well, won't my audience get bored? Well, the goal of your virtual event is to reach new people who have never heard your story before, right? But if you get good enough at your presentation, the people who have heard will want to come back and listen to it again. And so that's the power of getting good at your million dollar message, I call it. Absolutely, yeah, I like that million dollar message. That's a that's a really good um, a really good term. I I think I'm going to steal that. <laughs> <laughs> Go like, for it. I'll let you. Um, I guess um, you know virtual events. Uh, uh, are the way to go moving forward, you know, with your business. But, you know, what are the steps to creating the ideal virtual event? I'm sorry, can you say that last question? I didn't hear, I didn't hear that one. Sorry, what are the ideal steps to start um, of, and continue on with your virtual event? Yeah, I'll say it kind of plays off of what we said earlier, right, is getting number one, finding out where they're, you know, where your audience is at, what they need. And then from there, um, I would say, start with the, the the sales process. You know, we talked about high ticket a little bit, but I want you to really dial in and say, okay, um, let's work our way backwards. That's what I do with all my clients. I say, let's work our way backwards. What What's the goal of what we're going to sell here? Like, what's the goal? Are we selling this product, that product, this service? And then what we can do is we can go ahead and say, okay, now that we know we're selling this, when should we put it on our calendar to try to perform and try to do this, right? Um, so what I tell people is, you know, it depends on what kind of virtual event, because there's many, many different kinds. There's summits, there's webinars, there's all these things. But if you're just starting out, say start with a, a free webinar. It's a 60 to 90 minute class where you're just hopping in Zoom. And you may be like, Michael, in 60 to 90 minutes, that's crazy, that's bonkers, right? So I'll say uh, just 60 to 90 minutes, you can do it, I promise. Your first one may be a little shorter, but it's okay. Uh, and then what did you do is you just say, okay, I'm going to do this. If it's a 60, 90 minute training, I'm going to do this a month from now. I'm going to do this three weeks from now. And just put it in your calendar, put it in your calendar so it can't escape. Post it on social media that you're going to be doing it in three weeks, four weeks. So you keep yourself accountable and then you start building your content from there. And the most important part is the content. And so what I would love for you all to do, if you have a pen and paper, like you're listening to this, you're watching this, I want you to write down the word rise, R-I-S-E, rise. Um, we have this rise framework that we do and it's pretty much this. R stands for relate. You want to have in your talk, a part where uh, you relate to the audience. It could be through telling a story, telling your story. Um, so, you know, in your presentation, you're going to want to relate with them. That's what the R and RISE stands for. The I is inform. And so you, after you tell your story and you connect with them, you're going to inform them and educate them uh, normally for 30 to 40 minutes, right? This is going to be normally we tell people no more than three Th three things or three steps in your webinar. Uh, so I for inform, you're going to teach them three things. It could be, I'm going to teach you how to uh, build the, the best nutrition plan for your blood type. It could be that we're going to show you how to uh, do X, Y, Z. I don't know what that is. And then the S is after you have informed them, you are going to encourage them to start. S stands for start. And this is where your product and your service comes in place. And so when you're building out your presentation, you're like, okay, this is where it gets good. This is where I can talk about what I'm actually good at and what I actually can sell them. And um, that's the S. The E stands for empower. So after you sell and you start your, uh, you know, you encourage them to start, you want to leave them on a high note. You want to leave them empowered. And so if you do all those things, you relate to them, you inform them, you encourage them to start, and then you leave them empowered, you'll have a great webinar, you all. And so that's the most important is start there with the RISE framework, get good, build out that presentation. You have it on the calendar already. And now it's just time to promote it time to shout it from the rooftops, shout it on Facebook, Instagram, maybe even run ads if you want. There's many different ways you can get the word about your event out. Great, a great um, 
way to to build out your webinar michael thank you for sharing those tips um i think it, it makes it easy for people to remember that um the rise uh and how to go about structuring their webinar in the future um michael can be found um uh, at, on facebook um you can find him on the official michael tucker on linkedin the official michael tucker he's on instagram he's on youtube and he has a service uh, at uh, the million dollar secrets.com uh, michael what can people find there yeah yeah we would love to connect with you guys so you know if you are sitting here and you're like you know what virtual events are definitely something i want to learn something i want to get good at we want to help you so we actually have you know just a community where you can come in we'll coach you on how to run virtual events and we even have a service that if you qualify we'll even run your virtual events for you so you don't have to do all the techie stuff so if you want you can go to million dollar secrets.com all the information's there but listen we would love to either way just help you get your mission and message out into the world because there's somebody out there that needs it there's somebody out there that needs your message just like rose is doing this podcast because she believes there's entrepreneurs and business owners that need to hear these conversations you have that same message inside of you. So we want to help you. So just reach out, connect. I would love to see how we can help. And um, I'm here to serve always. Oh, Michael, thank you so much. I mean, it, it, running a virtual event can be challenging, um, but if you use the the steps necessary and, and use a step-by-step -step process, it, it's almost foolproof, to be honest. Um, and, you know, even even I've got um, a, a step step process that I follow sometimes I don't get it right and I miss a step <laughs> and, you know, and then you've got to go back and you've got to try and fix everything but you know if you have a process in place it's almost fail safe so Michael thank you so much for joining me today and and sharing your tips on running um, profitable and successful virtual events thank you for having me have a great day bye-bye you've been listening to talking with the experts hosted by Rose Davidson Make sure you have a look at our back catalogue over at talkingwiththeexperts.com and be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss out on any episode. We look forward to your company next time.